Okay, so today we'll be talking about some applications of electrochemistry beyond electrolysis or uh, electricity generation from a galvanic cell. Uh, so one application is potentiometry. So what this means is that we're measuring potential of a cell under some constant current, typically zero current. Shell at zero current. And the reason this is useful is because we know from last class that the potential, it doesn't have to be of a cell, it could be of a half reaction, could be related to the standard potential minus gas constant time temperature, number of electrons, Faraday constant, natural log of Q. And then if we're talking only about reduction potentials, then this is also going to be equal to here minus this over, and then the products in this case are the reduced species, excuse me, log over the concentration of the oxidized species. So this is uh, one of the typical forms you'll see of the Nernst equation. And so what this means is that if we can find out our non-standard potential, so of whatever conditions we have in our beaker, in our cell, whatever, um, then we can relate uh, our cell potential to concentration. So we can use cell potential to find other chemical information. Okay, so the problem is, problem, that again, we can't measure half reactions, uh, the, the potentials of half reactions directly, right? We can only measure a cell potential, and that's going to be of two competing half reactions, an oxidation and a reduction. So for the standard reduction potentials of the tables that we used before, the way we got around this is we measured the, we had this reference electrode, which was a standard hydrogen electrode. And if you remember, so previously, we've used uh, the hydrogen and protons at a platinum electrode. Um, hydrogen, gas, protons. And then this was our whatever E. So this is what we've done to get the standard potentials. And this was one molar. So the problem is we could do the same thing to figure out the potential, but the hydrogen, the standard hydrogen electrode isn't very convenient to use. You know, you're making hydrogen gas, flammable, you have to maintain your concentration at one molar. This might be very difficult. So in practice, if we want to be able to measure the potentials for a half reaction or to calculate you know, our concentrations of different values, what we do is we use other reference electrodes. And then so the typical setup is to use a different kind of reference electrode. So if I have a beaker, here's my beaker. And this beaker is filled with something. We're going to have, say, a green solution. So what potentiometry can do is we want to be able to probe the contents. So we'll use, if we could find E, whatever E is of this solution, then we'll get out to the concentration of whatever's in there. Oops, that's cut off. Concentration. So the way potentiometry works is we need to figure out a way to put our cell in there. So then we can figure out, measure this potential as well as have a reference electrode. So the typical setup is you will we'll put a voltmeter here. And then we'll have our some electrode. We haven't yet defined what it is, because we, we're still not sure what we're measuring here. It depends, it, de it depends on what is in this beaker. So this is called the indicator electrode. Uh, 
Um, this will be called our analyte. Oops. Well, analyte. That'll be what's in this beaker. Here's our voltmeter, which we're using to measure the potential. And then we must complete our full cell. So rather than having the hydrogen electrode, we'll have a different reference electrode. And what we can do is we'll put the, the reference electrode here. So rather than having two beakers where we have the reference reaction in a separate beaker with a salt bridge, what we can do is put this entire setup and have basically this is my refer reference electrode beaker here. So we'll have some sort of electrode wire go here. We haven't said what this is yet. And then, so this will be my reference solution. And then the last thing we need is a salt bridge. So we need to figure out a way to have the ions here communicate with the ions here in this beaker. So what has typically happened, uh, we use this sort of porous membrane or a frit, and then this is how they're in communication. So this is equivalent to having a separate beaker with our reference electrode and a salt bridge, but we're just having it within here. So. Uh, over here is our reference electrode. Um, and then this pink solution here is some sort of salt. Salt solution. And then this is going to be a porous frit. And then so this solution, in combination with this porous membrane, this equals our salt bridge. So if we were to express this in terms of our typical cell notation, what we have is we'll have our reference electrode, by convention written on the left. And then we'll have our salt bridge, which is, again, this porous membrane and the salt solution within the reference electrode beaker, or I guess in this case it's a tube. It's a sealed off glass tube. And then we'll have our analyte solution, which is this green thing. So analyte. And we'll have some sort of phase boundary, because this is in solution. And our pink over here is the indicator electrode. And then, so when we want to actually measure the cell potential, we can, we can measure. This is a complete cell. We'll have one reaction, half reaction at the reference electrode. We'll have the half reaction over here between the indicator electrode and the analyte solution. And thus, we have a complete cell. So the different potentials that we'll be measuring that are the components of this full cell potential will be, uh, we'll have one section over here. So at this analyte solution, we'll have what's called the indicator potential. So this is the right side. So this, on our previous galvanic cells, this is our cathodic reaction. And then on this right side here, we'll have some sort of reference electrode potential. Um, so that's whatever potential this left side reference electrode is measuring. So these are two half reactions. And the one last thing is we might have some potential difference between this solution and outside the solution. And this is called the junction potential. So that's often called EJ for junction. And then so for our full cell, it's the same cell notation we've talked about before, where E cell is going to be equal to the right side minus left side. So E indicator minus E ref. In this case, we'll just add on the junction potential. In many cases, we'll ignore this. So often, you might ignore the junction potential, and then we'll ignore this. This is often usually a, like a few millivolts. And so this is our complete setup. So when you have some sort of uh, potentiometry setup, you'll have your reference electrode and the working electrode, whatever that is. And then together, we can then start measuring potentials of different solutions. And then we can get good information out of that. Um, and so the potentials of, or the applications of potentiometry are really important. And so one thing we'll be talking about in the next video is we can use this to measure the concentrations of specific ions, like metal ions or anions. Or we can use this to measure uh, gas concentrations. Uh, one major application of potentiometry is the pH meter. We can measure concentrations of hydronium ion. And this has been 
hugely important in many industries, including agriculture. If you want to measure like the acidity of lemon juice, for example, or lemons, uh, that's really important. Um, so uh, this is a really important application of electrochemistry that you guys should be aware about. Thank you.